All right, I've got my officially licensed uh, Mickey Mouse shirt. Let's talk about The Mousetrap, the new Mickey Mouse horror film. Hey everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm here to talk to you about The Mousetrap, which is coming to VOD on August 6, 2024, and Blu-ray and DVD on August 13, 2024. It is a new horror movie that is based on the newly public domain Steamboat Willie intellectual property. Steamboat Willie went public domain on January 1st, 2024. This is using it because it can, because now it is in the public domain, so people can make, you can use it in their works, can make new works based on it, and there is no uh, licensing or approval required by Disney. Oh, and for this review, I have my friends. These are uh, hand-carved Mickey and Minnie Mouse statues that my grandparents uh, made for me. And just like the movie here, I don't believe that they paid Disney licensing for it, so oops. So is this movie worth your time? Is it gonna ruin your childhood? My hot take is, I think you should probably pass on it. Like, I love the concept of this. I love the idea of a Mickey Mouse uh, horror movie. I love the idea that they are going to take these characters and use them in different ways and be able to, like, create new properties and new things based on it. But this is just an okay horror movie. From a horror movie perspective, it's just okay. It has a wonderful concept and a clever use of the Mickey Mouse intellectual property, but... You don't have some great characters, uh, there's not great delivery, and it's not really that scary. It, it's not really a good scary horror movie either. So overall, I appreciate this. I'm glad it is out there, but uh, I think you should ultimately pass on it. But all that being said, I'm going to tell you a little about the film, a few things I like, a few things I didn't like, and then really quickly go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't know what happens in this movie, and you might not, there are some surprises along the way. I would turn it off when I get there. Before that, though, I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler-free. Let's try to get to the spoiler. So in the mousetrap, you have this place called the Fun Haven. It is a, an arcade. You've got a couple of workers there, Alex and Jaina, and their boss tells them that they have to stay late because there's a private party coming. So they have to stay late and host this private party. Their boss has to leave, and so they are host, They are in this store at night. But when that private party starts, it seems like maybe there is another guest here that has some ill intentions and a clever set of mouse ears. So things I liked about this movie. The first, I love the concept. Like I said, I love this. I love the idea that this is now like public domain and they're going to make new movies, new properties, new stories, things like that based on the Steamboat Willie character. Now there is a tricky little dance here you have to do because Steamboat Willie, the cartoon, went public domain. Mickey Mouse as a greater entity is still trademarked. Later iterations of Mickey Mouse, later cartoons and things like that are not public domain. So you have to stay in the like Steamboat Willie era Mickey Mouse to kind of qualify for this. You can use the Steamboat Willie film. You could show that if you wanted to. You can use, you know, characters from Steamboat Willie, but only characters from Steamboat Willie. So they had to make sure to use like Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse, things like that. Um, so I, and, and they, you know, they, they, they skirted that line pretty well. Like the, there's a line there that the mask is like, I thought that's a 1928 Mickey Mouse mask to make sure that, you know, it is the Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse, Mouse mask. But I love this. I love the idea that they are going to take this character and move it into like the horror genre, similar to what they did with Winnie the Pooh in Blood and Honey. I feel like this is going to be a new trend and Hey, I'm excited to see where they go, where this goes. Uh, second thing I liked, I love the clever use of copyright there, you know, Using Steamboat Willie for a horror movie is great. They also start the movie with a generic space crawl, like this, you know, the Star Wars opening, but they call it a generic space crawl to make sure that you know it is not Star Wars. They use similar sounding music, but not like Star Wars music. It is a fun movie. They know what they are doing and they are definitely like playing to that. So all that being said, things I didn't love about this movie. The first, they aren't that great characters. Like the cast is fine. I liked the cast. They were fun. They're all young actors, but uh, their characters are all pretty common, like archetypes. They're pretty one dimensional. You've got like the jock, you've got the nerd, you've got the worker, you've got the goth, things like that. Uh, it didn't feel like there was much nuance. Not that there always has to be, but this it felt like they could have like had these characters be a little bit more, have a little bit more depth. Some of the characters almost feel throwaway with, with how they are. So the second thing I didn't love, kind of related to the characters, it's not really great delivery. It feels like some of the lines for a little force, it feels like they could have had a couple more takes on them. That's not all of them. I really like Sophie McIntosh as uh, Alex. I thought she was really fun. But some of the characters' lines feel like they could have had a, a few more takes. And uh, the third thing I didn't love, it's not that great of gore. This is a horror movie. You would hope that there would be a lot of gore. And they're, they they skew on the practical side, but it is not, like, super gory. There is... um. 
you know, some little things of blood. I wish there was more blood because it's a horror movie. There is some CG blood that happens. You know, if you're going to lean into a horror movie, go all in, like have, have bigger, more elaborate practical effects, things like that to really kind of give you that visceral reaction. This is a slasher movie. It should have a bigger gore. And the last thing I didn't love, I love the concept. I love the use of copyright. I wish they would have gone further. Like, make the steamboat willy mickey like black and white like have him have like white shorts and things like that really lean in to the steamboat willy character because you know at the end of the day it is a killer in a mickey mouse mask he's wearing like a hockey jersey and whatnot so i wish that they would have gone further in have a steamboat scene i don't think that they were able to put that in the budget but it would have been nice to have like some scene on a steamboat just just for fun have some of the other characters from steamboat willy make appearances like the I actually don't know any of the other characters. The grumpy guy who, uh, you know, yells at Mickey or the cow. I think he, there's, a, there's a cow in there. Other characters would have been fun to kind of like really tie this all together. So all that being said, Mousetrap comes to VOD on August 6, 2024 and DVD and Blu-ray on August 13, 2024. Like I said, I think you should probably pass on it. It's a great idea. I just didn't think this really like came together as a horror movie. So if you do check it out, though, let me know what you think. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. I would love to hear it. And I'm going to really quickly go into the ending right now. So if you don't know what happens to this movie, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. So like I said, Mousetrap starts with this fantastic disclaimer. It's a, it's a generic space crawl, not Star Wars, generic space crawl that has all this disclaimer about how this is not licensed or endorsed or even related to Disney and how they're using Steamboat Willie. It's pretty clever. It's pretty funny. I like how it started because they definitely know what they are doing. Then it starts with a like witness interview of this person, Rebecca. She's a goth. She's in jail. There's two cops talking to her about some incident that happened and they want more information from her. And she seems pretty standoffish. But so then she says, if she tells them they're dead, well, they're detectives. They want to know what happened. So they're going to learn anyways. Then we get to the opening steamboat. Willie is like fully in there, which is great. They can do that because it is public domain. Like steamboat. Willie is playing in the opening as we see the various cast members. Good touch. I liked it. It refreshed everyone on, on who Steamboat Willie is and, and like what this is about. So then we move into the past, into this incident that happened at Funhaven. You've got Alex, who is a worker there, and um, Jaina, who is a like delinquent worker there. They're friends. Jaina seems a little selfish. Alex seems like she is like really kind of on top of it. They are closing up and their boss comes and tells them that like they need to work late. There was a last minute private party booked. And so uh, Alex and Jaina have to work late and they, you know, they begrudgingly accept it. And I was like, okay, so if Rebecca, the goth is telling the story, how does she know this? How does she know that this happened? It's fine. It's fine. We don't need to know. It, uh, she, I think she says that Alex told her, but there's a lot of detail in here that it would seem weird for Alex to tell her. So that's a little thing that to keep in mind. Now their boss, uh, Collins goes back to his office makes a drink and his office is like a steamboat willy shrine this was a clever touch it was it was like it had steamboat willy film it had like a mickey mouse mask he like puts steamboat willy on on a projector and like watches it while he's drinking and then while he's drinking i guess there's like a spray in the projector um and he's and like a ghostly voice calls him and he spills his drink on the projector cable which like sparks and i think that's how he got uh, taking over i wish that there was a better explanation for this like i don't I, I don't know what it would be i'm not a horror writer but i don't know maybe he buys a rare steamboat willy print off of ebay and it comes and it's like cursed or something or maybe uh you know he's obsessed with steamboat willy and was waiting for it to be public domain so he can now use it like i don't know something along those lines it just the the whole explanation didn't really work it, there was there was some sort of ghostly voice and then like he goes and like reaches for this uh, old Mickey Mouse mask. Now, Alex and Jane are cleaning up after the store. I think it's supposed to be closed, but there was like someone in the background playing one of the games. Again, silly. I don't know if it was like a, a mistake or if the store is still open. They're just trying to clean up before, but it feels like the store is closed and uh, there was someone back there. But again, it's fine. Alex and Jane are cleaning up. Jaina uh, is texting this boy and she asks to leave. So she's supposed to work. She's supposed to help, but she asks to leave. Alex is kind of a pushover here. So she says, okay. So as Alex is cleaning up, she goes to like the back door, I think to take out the trash or something. And when she's back there, she sees this creepy tall person in a Mickey Mouse mask by the back door. 
Um, and he like starts pursuing her. Alex like runs. You're like, okay, this is an interesting start. And then all of a sudden, surprise, her friends are there. Her friends are the party that was booked. They booked uh, you know, this last minute birthday party for her so she could have a birthday. It's a big surprise party. All of her friends are there. They're all sorts of like high school stereotypes. Ryan is like the jock. Uh, Marcus is the nerd. Uh, Becca is the goth. Um, some of the other people are not super important because they don't really matter. But anyways, that is this group of friends who are there to throw Alex a birthday party. So, hey, they booked it. She's getting paid for her birthday. That's pretty cool. That's pretty great. Um, but it was weird because when this happened, she didn't mention like, oh, my God, like there was a killer by the back door. She just assumed it was part of the prank. But wouldn't you mention it? Wouldn't be like, that was a weird prank. Why were you guys back there? Why was there someone with a knife back by the back door? None of that. They just go into the party. So the two main like men in this film are Ryan and, and Marcus. Ryan is like a jock. He likes Alex, although he likes her as like a side piece. He, he's like, he wants her to, he wants to like hook up with her as like a backup girlfriend. Marcus really likes Alex, but uh, he is very shy, very timid. Alex seems to like him, but he, you know, doesn't take the hint. He doesn't like make a move. So that is the conundrum that these two men have. Now, there are other characters. Uh, there's one named Paul who's kind of a creeper and he has a girlfriend. They go off into the um, into the like a, a maze or something like that, a laser tag area to go make out. While they're there, wouldn't you know it, an evil Mickey Mouse shows up. He attacks them. They scream. No one hears that in this building. You would think that they would hear a scream, but you know, apparently it seems like Paul and his girlfriend get killed by the mouse. So the other kids are drinking, having fun. We find out that Becca, the golf girl, has a crush on Alex, which is, uh, you know, an in it's an interesting point, but nothing that really comes up ever again. It, you would think that they would like use that later. It's okay. Um, then, then they say like, hey, let's, let's go to a real bar. Let's have a real drink. And they decide to leave. And I was like, don't you need to clean up? Like, you're still working here. This is still a party. Like, if you all leave, you need to clean up. They try to leave the front the, from the front door, but it's locked. It's like locked with a new lock. They can't figure it out. Also, the phone is their phones are missing. They had to they give it. They gave, all gave their phones at the start of the party to make sure that they were all present at this party and all their phones are missing. So they're starting to get annoyed. They think that like one of them is playing a joke and they're like, oh, we can try the fire exit. Now it's like, you know where the fire exit is. You scared, you know, you scared me with that mask. And they're like, what are you talking about? So now she mentions it later. She didn't mention it before when someone was pursuing her with a knife. Now she mentions it. So Marcus finally decides to make his move after this. He asks if he can give Alex his, her present. And so he goes and has her close her eyes, comes to this table on the table. I don't know when he set this up. Maybe when they were worried about this killer. I'm not sure. Uh, he set up this like cute table of all these different candies from around the world with various flags. Because Alex apparently loves sour candy. So he got her sour candies from all over the world. She sits down, he shows her, it's very cute, it's very sweet, he clearly likes her, um, and they're about to have a moment when someone comes and screams. So they're sitting there, they're talking, it's really cute, Alex asks if she gets a birthday wish, and she literally tells Marcus, ask me out. And he, like, stammers, I'm like, dude, Marcus, she's giving you all the signals, like, just do it. He's stammering, they don't get their moment, though. Because one of the friends comes up to them and is scared. She saw Mickey. She was looking for either phones or Paul and saw the Mickey with a knife and he like flicked blood on her. So she comes and finds Alex and is like, there's someone like flicking blood, like real blood. And now they get very concerned. So Alex goes to like turn off the lights and they start looking around. Now, one of them decides to put on a VR headset and like play a VR game, which, okay, great. I mean, I thought you're all going to go to a bar. I don't, I don't know. It's very odd choices here but what we do find out about mickey is that he's a killer and also he can teleport now we also find out that uh light seems to like stall him like he can't i think it's a it's a throwback to the projector the projector that was making the steamboat willy uh movie when he's in light he can't use some of his powers he can't teleport he can teleport when he's not in light i guess we, so we know a little bit about mickey and now we are looking for where he is now on a completely side note Ryan was going to have some friends beat up Marcus because they were both in contention for Alex. He wanted his competition out of the way. So he had some of his hockey friends waiting to beat up Marcus. They're all waiting for a bar like next door to this place. While they're there, for some reason, Mickey decides to go into that bar and beat them all up. I don't know why. I'm not sure why. I don't know why he was mad. I don't know why he left. 
that arcade, but he goes into that bar. They all approach him. Uh, they kind of hassle him and he takes a hockey stick and just beats them all up in not a great fight. It would have been nicer to have like a more robust fight, maybe some more blood. Uh, it is very quick, very like one strike. They're all taken out. So during this time, they're trying to figure out what to do, how to get people here because the phones are not working. They're trying to get some people to this establishment. And so one of them says, you should pull the fire alarm. That'll cause a fire brigade to come. So Alice goes and does that. But now we start to see Mickey work his dark magic. Uh, one of the kids, Danny, is in laser tag. He finds Rebecca the goth in there. She had seen Mickey earlier and was kind of like in fear. Um, she They tried to run and escape, but Mickey like cut her. I think he cut her. It looked like he cut her Achilles. So she shouldn't be able to walk after this. Not good for her. Um, and Danny turns around to help her and Danny gets killed. So now Danny's gone. One of the girls, one of the girls, the girls on VR gets like kind of, you know, tensely harassed by Mickey. Like while she's in VR, he like goes and like pretends to slit her throat and things like that. Eventually she gets out of VR and he kills her. So eventually after some of these friends are killed, we are left with Ryan, Alex, Marcus, and one of the other friends. And they decide, you know what? They need to go on the offensive. They can't keep running away from Mickey. He's disappearing here and there. So they need to go on the offensive and attack Mickey. So they set up a trap. They get into this like, you know, fun area. Um, they lure him in. And when he's in there, Alex puts a light on him and he like tries to attack them, but they're all behind, you know, like, uh, like a bars, essentially this, this place has like safety bars for the kids. So he can't attack them. He like throws things at them and they bounce off. And so now that they're under the light, now that he's under the light and he can't teleport, uh, Marcus and Ryan hit him with various items. They beat him up and they subdue him. And one of the things that they had done for the light, they, they started with a flashlight, but then Alex turned on like some strobe lights to like really to have, you know, a ton of light on him and, and stop him. So after the, he's subdued, they all go down there to like say, yeah, we beat him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden the lights turn red. Like the, it seems like the power goes out, emergency lights pop on. That's not the kind of light that stops Mickey. So all of a sudden Mickey's able to teleport. So they had him subdued and then he was gone. So after this story, so the detectives are talking to her back then. They say, like, you don't seem that upset that your friends are all dead because she had survived. She wasn't with the group when they did the final assault on Mickey. She was still, I think, in the laser tag area with a hurt Achilles, but um, she had survived. She doesn't really say anything. We hear, like, an ambulance off in the distance. And then we go back to the the, the fun house, the, the fun zone, fun haven, fun haven. And we see Alex say he's not coming back. And then all of a sudden... Mickey appears, slices Alex's head off with a broadsword, and then teleports away. And then uh, Ryan says, what a complete, and starts to say a word that you probably wouldn't want to say on a movie, and the movie ends. So that is the mouse trap. There is a stinger at the end of the credits. At the, at the end of the credits, we see Becca in the cell. Apparently, she's the only one being held in the cell. I don't know where the other friends are. Maybe they're not suspects. Who knows? But she is in the cell. The lights turn red. We hear the like Mickey Mouse voice, the creepy Mickey Mouse voice say, come play with me. I have so many people I want you to meet. And we're just getting started. And then Rebecca smiles. So I guess she was part of this, which is weird. Like, I don't understand why she would be part of this. She liked Alex. I don't think she would want Alex to be killed. Maybe she would want the other people to be killed if that was her plan. Like, Maybe she wanted Marcus and Ryan to be killed. If she was going to be teaming up with Mickey, you would think that she would make a, a pact with him to not kill Alex, not kill the person that she likes. That's the last person that Mickey killed for some reason. I don't know why Alex had to die also. I liked Alex. I thought she was a fun character. So that was just a random like aside. And it didn't look that great. It looked okay, but uh, it didn't look that great. And it was weird that Mickey all of a sudden used a broadsword when, all, when before he'd been using knives. It would have been nice to have some variety in how Mickey killed. He used a knife and he used a wrench, but... I don't know, some sort of fire at Steamboat Willie. Maybe if he threw someone in a furnace, that would have been interesting. Uh, there was one scene in Steamboat Willie where he feeds a cow. Maybe if he fed someone to death, that would have been like, tie it closer to the movie and show scenes from it while that's happening. That would have been interesting. But anyways, that is the end of The Mousetrap. Like I said, I like the concept. I like the idea. I like that this is going to become a new normal, but I don't think this is a great horror movie on its own. So I think you should ultimately pass on it. But if you do uh, watch it, let me know what you think. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. I would love to hear it. And thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.